This video is sponsored by SASE, the Society for Automation Software Engineers. Check us out for a few more words later in the video. Since the dawn of mankind, a war has been raging. Many fierce battles have been fought over the years, and many internet warriors have been slain in the battles. It's a war that all of us automation engineers have been involved in or seen being fought. It's the war of whether one should be using graphical languages or text-based languages for PLC programming. Like two trebuchets facing each other's, internet soldiers on both sides of the fence have thrown arguments at each other. On the one side, we have the Lords of Ladder representing the graphical languages. On the other side, we have the Saints of Structured Text representing the text-based languages. Arguments like the following are usually thrown between the two sides. The maintenance people using the machine won't know structured text. Structured text is more appropriate for version control. You don't use the whole brain if you don't use a graphical language. Ladder is old school. Remember that you're the one they will call at 3 a.m. when the machine is done. It's hard to write complex functions using ladder. And it goes on and on. So which language is the best? It's the wrong question to ask. The question of which language PLC programmers should use takes the focus away from the stuff that really matters. I thought we'd look at three concepts, all related to creating robust software, that should concern you more than what language you should learn and use. We'll start our journey with the topic of modularity. We want to create software by combining reusable chunks of code so that we only write some functionality once and then maximize the reuse of it. In a program where everything is defined in big chunks and everything can talk to everything through global space, modularity is low and it will be very hard to reuse code. What we should strive to achieve instead is small classes and function blocks that have a limited responsibility and where each module talks to the others through well-defined interfaces and dependencies. By adding a layer of abstraction between the modules, we can replace the concrete implementation of a certain service in case we have specific requirements for a project, such as is the case with the event logger. Each module here doesn't care about how the events are logged, only that they are logged. If we want to replace a file-based logging service with one that uses a database, the rest of the code should not care about that. If we design our software into these small modules and by letting them communicate through these interfaces, we can easily reuse our function blocks for other projects and instantiate variants of them to cover a specific project or need. If we have different types of I/O modules or sensors and actuators, we just replace those with the ones we are using in that particular project. More importantly, we can also define automatic tests for the various software artifacts much easier, which we will get into in the last part of this video. The separation of concerns is one of the most fundamental principles of software development. Separation of concerns helps managing complexity by partitioning the software so that each partition is responsible for a separate concern, minimizing the overlap of concern as much as possible. By applying separation of concerns, you can avoid the blob anti-pattern, which occurs when a function block becomes too large and complex and takes on too many roles, which is illustrated by this function block. It becomes what is called a god function block. Software with many concerns gets very complicated and hard to understand, and it's usually very hard to make changes in it. In this alternative software architecture, we're dividing our software so that each function block has a limited concern, we do this by applying various patterns and principles, such as layered architecture, the interface segregation principle, or the dependency inversion principle, which all help in defining the boundaries, interfaces and dependencies between the different parts of your software, and ensuring that each part has a clear and single responsibility. In this particular example, the various software modules have their dependencies defined through a technique known as dependency injection, in which a module receives other objects, instead of creating them internally, avoiding that big blob we were talking about earlier. If you want to know more about dependency injection in the context of PLC programming, I'm talking about dependency injection on my free course here on YouTube, accessible in the link above. If separation of concerns is adhered to and the programmer wants to add some new functionality, he or she will only have to change the relevant code that is directly associated with the new feature. There is another big advantage of having modules with separate concerns, which is testability. 
when you have modules which have less responsibility, it also gives a possibility to mock them in an automated testing environment. If you're writing automatic tests for your function blocks, you can create mocks or fakes for the dependencies that your software module has. It's a very powerful technique that aids in managing complexity. And on the topic of complexity. All of this is done because doing software is really, really hard, and we have to manage the complexity. Complexity is a big scary monster that has to be chopped up in less complex pieces to be manageable. By adhering to these practices, we break up the problem into smaller pieces and approach one problem at a time instead of trying to solve all of them at once. Before we continue, a few words from our sponsor. I'm very happy that SASE, the Society for Automation Software Engineers, is sponsoring this potentially very controversial video. That's because I created this community, SASE, for folks who care about taking software engineering principles and using them in PLCs. So if you're thinking about source control, continuous delivery, testing, this is the place where you need to come hang out. Come check us out at sassy.space. Get into what I personally think is the most important point in this list, as it will guide you in achieving the two first points, is automated testing and test-driven development. TDD is a technique that involves writing automated tests before writing code that implements the functionality. It's a cyclic process from red, green and blue. TDD starts with you writing failing tests for the behavior of your code. The tests will be failing as you have not written the implementing code yet. Focus here is only on the behavior of the code. Only once you have written the failing test should you continue to the next step, which is to write code until the tests pass. At this step it's not necessary that the code is pretty. Only focus on making sure that the tests pass and not any further. In this phase you think of how you want to develop the code so that the tests pass. Once this step is done, you can go to the last and final step which is to refactor the code. In this phase, you as a developer can change the names of your variables, change your algorithms and any implementation details as you find necessary. In this phase, you think of how you can improve your code. This cycle is the TDD software development process. TDD is about the behavior of the code. The value of the tests is that they are the specifications of how the code should behave. So the code is free to change all you want, as long as it can still be validated against the tests. You can improve performance, refactor for readability, etc. The tests ensure that the behavior remains unchanged. There are several benefits of doing TDD. For example, you'll have a test suite that you can rerun at any time you make changes to the code, to make sure you haven't broken anything. You'll also automatically get correct documentation of the code, as your tests describe the expected behavior of the code. Most importantly, doing TDD will guide you in your design of your software. Running automated tests is a very enjoyable feeling, seeing all those tests pass. They will always be there ready to run and to verify that your code is indeed doing what it's supposed to do. I have a whole course about TDD in industrial automation here on YouTube. Click on the link above if you're interested. Amongst these concepts and practices, there are other that could be covered and most likely will be covered in future videos. But which language you should use is amongst the bottom of the things that are important. The point of this whole video is that if you don't follow any of these practices, it doesn't matter if you code in ladder or structured text. Your code will still be crap. What are the things you consider important for writing good industrial software? Please leave a comment with your thoughts. My name is Jakob Zagatowski and thank you for listening.